morning. It's so nice to spend time with you this morning, even though it's restricted, even though um, I would have loved to be with you in person, just um, giving you a hug, which we have not even allowed at this moment, or maybe just shake your hand. But um, irrespective of that, you know what, the reality is that we can spend some time around God's Word. And it's been nearly three months since our church has been restricted due to the regulations over the last few months. And I think we really come to a place where we really, really long for fellowship with, uh, with one another, with our Lord. And, um, and I want to share with you this morning something that I shared with our men uh, last year at our men's camp. It was probably something prophetically for where we are going, and which is much more applicable for, for where we are now, where we are in the practical side of this. Um, I remember I've shared with you many times before that the Lord a couple of years ago started speaking to me about the presence of Him, uh, getting people into His presence, and that it's all about His presence. His specific and particular words was that, Yaku, that your, the church will not change with your lips or through your lips, but through my presence. And, um, and it set me on a course, on a journey to discover that and to find out more of that and to pursue that. And then over that period of time that the Lord also took us down a route um, specifically of discovering more about prayer, specifically about intercession. That was in 2018. Then it culminated in 2019 and the Lord just gave us um, such an amazing impartation through speakers that were here, etc. But then also with that being said, um, our worship started changing and, and, and in, in, in short, um, the Lord spoke to us specifically about keys that would become instrumental in experiencing His presence. And that those two keys were specifically intercession and worship, and that we had to focus on that. And people, we are at this moment in a time when we are restricted, but the beauty of that is that we are not restricted in terms of those two specific tools that we can use, especially in this time. And this morning I want to sh uh, share with you a couple of thoughts around Scripture, specifically about a concept called coming in and going out. And if you want to turn with me, I want us to read from 1 Kings 3, verse 5 to 10. And it says, At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask, what shall I give you? And Solomon said, You have shown great mercy to your servant David, my father, <clears throat> because he walked before you in truth, in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with you. You have continued this great kindness for him, and you have given him a son to sit on his throne, on his throne as it is this day. Now listen to what, what Solomon says. Now, O Lord my God, this is his prayer. You have made your servant king instead of my father David. But I am a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people, whom you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to be numbered or counted. Therefore, give to your servant an understanding heart, judge, and sorry. Uh, therefore, give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? And then it says in verse ten, the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon has asked such a thing. It's um, it's so interesting that Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived on earth, when the Lord approached him and um, son of David. And the Lord asked him, what can I give to you? You know, many people just think it's just wisdom. But there's something specifically that, um, that Solomon asked. And Solomon said to the Lord, he said, Lord, I know my father was a military man. I know that my father understands, understood something. And there's something about my father's legacy, inheritance, something that I've noticed and that I need, that I haven't got. I'm a little child. And he says, um, Lord, I want to know how to go in and come, or go in and come out. And then he says, my father were used to that. My father knew how to do that, but I need to learn it. Listen to this. Um, we see this also in Numbers 27, because the scripture, it appears again in scripture, when Moses prays to the Lord, and he says to him, the man that must succeed me, again, the man that must succeed me must know how to do this. Then Moses spoke, this is Numbers 27, verse 15 to 17. Then Moses spoke to the Lord, saying, let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, Set the man over the congregation, who may go out before them, and go in before them, who may lead them out and bring them in, that the congregation of the Lord may not be like a sheep which have no shepherd. Interesting that that appears again. Then, when Moses eventually retires, 
in his retirement speech, and we find it in Deuteronomy 31, verse 1 to 2, he says this, Then Moses went and spoke these words to all of Israel, and he said to them, I am 120 years old today. I can no longer go out and come in. Also, the Lord has said to me, you shall not cross over this Jordan. So, uh, again, Moses is saying, listen, when, when I retire, the man that must come after me must be able to do these two things. He must know how to go in and come out, or go in and go out as well. Same thing. Then, we find the same scripture, again, when Joshua, um, and he speaks to, uh, about the same concept again. He says in Joshua 14, verse 11, as yet, this is Joshua speaking, as yet I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. So Moses is basically saying, the guy that would come after me in his retirement speech, he must know how to do this. Well, listen, it's not just an Old Testament. We find this um, whole concept about um, going in and out in the New Testament as well. That famous scripture in John 10, verse 10, um, but actually verse 9, that says this, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. This is Jesus speaking. You might wonder this morning, what is this going in, coming out? But the reality or the beauty is that scripture always defines itself. Let's look at uh, Joshua 14, verse 11. When Joshua speaks almost uh, the, at the end of his um, of his journey, and he says this, and, As yet, I am as strong this day on, the, uh, on this day as on the day that Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. What is he talking about? He's talking about going out into war. Joshua was a man of war. David was a man of war. And he knew how to go out and, um, and to, to, to fight the battles out there. Now you might ask me this morning, are we still in a battle? Um, are we still? No, it's not a battle against flesh and blood. But indeed, it's a battle against the spirit, uh, spiritual uh, principalities and all those things. And indeed, I want to say this to you for the record. I think our nation has never ever been in such a spiritual battle than ever before. Probably since independence, this is some of, I don't want to sound like a prophet that just gives you all the negative news, but we're probably in some of the darkest times or contention that the spirits are contending for, 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 for control in this nation. And it's really in this time that we need to focus, that we need to go out in war and that we use these things and these tools that God has given us. The enemy at this moment is trying to fight for your family, to gain control over your family, to gain control over the church, to gain control over this nation, over our government. And it's in times like these that we have to use the tools that God has given us. Remember I said to you that there are two specific tools which I believe God has given us. And we are on a practical side of that. We are actually on battleground right now as we speak. That we need to know how to use that. We know when God calls us to, to, to use that, to know how to pray. God has already prepared us. Two years before this came, He started preparing us. Now many of us sometimes, you know what, it takes a while for us to, to get to the bigger picture. And that's fine. We, we help one another. That's why scripture there. But the reality is that we need to eventually learn how to use this. Because we're going to go into a time where we're going to rest so-called. But then in that time of rest, it's also a time of preparation. So that when we go out in battle again, we know how to do. Now, interesting as well, apart from the going out, which refers to the war, there's also a going in. And when we look at scripture again, the same thing. Scripture means going into the presence of God. Um, when you use this whole concept of war, you understand and see in, in the history of Israel, Every time when they, when they were in war, they could go back to Jerusalem, they could go back to the temple, but they only went back to the temple for, for various reasons. First of all, they went there to repent. When they lost the war, when there was something wrong, they had to go back to the temple, they had to repent, they had to see God's face and ask God, um, Lord, where did we go wrong? What did we do wrong? And then the Lord would show them, and there are several um, situations, several examples in Scripture where they would go out in war and the Lord would give victory to them, specifically because they inquired of the Lord. Then there were cases when, when Israel, in the middle of the war, would go back to Jerusalem and they would just refresh themselves in the presence of God. And then also, uh, the third case which we see in Scripture is that they would go back to the temple and that they would have a shout of victory, that they would have moments of praise, that they would have moments 
of just thanking God for giving victory to them. You know, as we are in this middle of this situation where we find ourselves and we've been up and down, we've been in different stages, we've been uh, in places like isolation, in places of uncertainty, in places of short notice and uncom being uncomfortable, all of that, you know. It's so important that we refresh ourselves. Uh, specifically in the presence of God we're talking about here, people. It's not just a, a mental thing, it's not just some exercise, but it's a spiritual thing which we, which we need to do. I am honestly concerned and, and, and I'm trusting God that this breakthrough will come soon. But I'm concerned about the, about the bigger gathering of us as a church. We've been for there for, for more than a, for almost three months now. And like I say, when I say I'm concerned, because here's the thing, we need to get refreshed. We need one another. And that's why we need to stand together. We need to pray. We need to trust God that for us in the wrong region, specifically the rest of our country, bless our nation, bless the rest of our brothers here. But for us as the Irongo region, we really need to trust God that the doors would open soon for us as a, as a, as a body to fellowship together and the greater body to fellowship together. Because here's the thing, we can have time together with God and at this given time, that's basically what we have is to refresh ourselves in the presence of God individually. But, but here's the thing, God has required, uh, reserved a certain amount of His presence, and you can look uh, into that in Ephesians, a certain amount of His presence, which is only reserved for when we come together. That is the beauty of the body. That is the beauty when different people, different personalities, different aspects of God, so-called, because we reflect different aspects of God, come together. There's a there's an holy fear and atmosphere when the presence of God manifests and we step into that place. And, and often we don't have the same at home. We can have moments with God at home that is special, that is really awesome. We have moments in God's presence here in, the, in intercession that is also some uh, form of corporate uh, presence. But then when we come together and worship, it's, a, it's just a place of refreshment. And I'm asking you to trust with me that we have those moments soon. But in the meanwhile, God has given us the ability, and that is the beauty of the Holy Spirit living inside of us, that we can connect with Him at home in our quiet times. So I want to encourage you, get refreshed in the presence of God. Don't neglect that. Um, this past Wednesday, we had, a, we had a moment which we just sense we want to draw all our people back into the presence of God. And that's why we send out the letter just to remind everybody or just encourage everybody, invite them into the presence of God. Worship together as a family and do that often at this time. See, the fact of the matter or the thing is, we don't go out from the presence of God, but we go out with the presence of God. But when we haven't been in the presence of God, we cannot go out with the presence of God. And we need the presence of God to fight the wars out there. So I want to encourage you people, get to end the session, learn how to use those tools. But I want to quickly share this morning um, on, um, on what does these tools give us. When we talk about uh, worship and, um, and intercession, why, why did the Lord give us the worship and intercession? First of all, I believe worship and prayer brings God's presence in our life. I touched about that. But I want to read, an, um, uh, read to you in 1 Samuel 18, verse 12 to 16. It's, an, it's an amazing scripture here. It says, Now Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him. Well, let's just stop there for a moment. Um, the Lord was with him and Saul was afraid. But it talks about God's presence upon David's life. And, and we know that David was a worshiper. Scripture is full with that example. So there are so many Psalms, but David was also a warrior. But that made David a great king. Not the fact that David was uh, just a warrior, but the fact that David was a worshiper. That David was comfortable in the presence of God, that he could become vulnerable, that he could become... Uh, that he could just be honest with God about his, uh, his human errors, his sin, his struggles, the real things. And that's when we get into the presence of God, that we can become real in God's presence, really honest. You see, it's not what we own, it's not how we look, it's not what we have in this world. And I think our world has been shaken completely in this time. But it's the presence of God in our lives that distinguish us this morning from great men and those that are just ordinary. And I say great, not great in our own eyes, great in God's eyes. You see, it's a gift of God to us, His presence upon our lives. And it's something that we need to protect. It's something that we need to nurture. It's something where we need to seek the Holy Spirit at all times, where we need to say, Lord, I want your presence upon me. I want to walk in your presence. And David specifically talks about that in Psalm 51, 
then when he sins and he runs back to God and says, God, I want your presence. Don't not take your presence away from me. And he understands that. See, if we mess up, here's the thing. If you've messed up, listen, people, just go back to the Lord. And say, Lord, don't take your presence from me. I want your presence. Because as long as God's presence is upon our lives, the fear of the Lord still remains upon our lives. And when we're in the presence of God, we're in the safe place of God. It's our most precious or precious possession. The Lord says to Abram, I am your exceedingly great reward. I'm your price. And that should be our price in this moment of time as well. Um, during this time, I figured out as well, you know, with all the bad news that's happening, we had to, uh, we had really had to, to, to put on the filter and say to ourselves, what is going to bring my joy? Who is going to give me joy? Or what situation is going to cause joy or contentment in my life? And ultimately, the conclusion we come to every, every time we get to Scripture, that God is the only one that can give us ultimate joy and contentment. Yes, I know we're all relieved from where we are right now in the, in the midst of the situation that there were some um, restrictions that were lifted, and I'm so glad about that. But ultimately, God is our exceedingly great reward. Secondly, worship and prayer brings God's fear in our lives. Um, the Scripture says that uh, Saul specifically was afraid of David, because the Lord was with him. It says in verse 12, Now Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him, but he departed from Saul. Wow. You see, there's a different angle in the story. Not only do we need the fear of God upon our lives so that it keeps us from sinning, that it keeps us from stumbling, that we are walking with the utmost fear, and I think at this given time as well that we need to pray that the fear of the Lord would return in our nation and our leaders. Because when the fear of the Lord is not upon a nation or leadership, it's a very dangerous place to be because then we go according to our own wisdom. But apart from that, there's another angle which I want to look at. When the fear of the Lord is upon us as believers, the enemy would notice that. you know. And what happens when he noticed that, he's afraid of us. The same thing here with Saul. Saul was afraid of David. Not why? Because God's presence was upon David's life. And then he became afraid. And, and, and imagine that. When we walk in such an, um, such a, with such identity, with such um, in the fullness of who God is, and the fullness of what we pursue Him to be, and allow Him to, to come and take root inside of us and take possession of us, the fear of God will come upon our lives because the presence of God is in our lives. And what happens as a result, the enemy are afraid. People, I think in this last three months, we had amazing times just to strengthen ourselves in the presence of God specifically around our intercession. Those are times that we were trained to war in, in the spiritual realm, to submit to God, to allow Him to use us so that the enemy would run. I remember as a little boy, I used to, um, to I loved Rambo. I loved to watch all those movies and I collected some of that stuff as well. And even now I have to admit, you know, I, I watched the latest movie and well, my family not always as fond about that as I am. But I remember as a little boy, you would dream about this hero and you think about the strong man and all of that. But, um, but think about that for a moment, you know. If you walk next to that strong man, he's probably older now, but you wouldn't be afraid. But think about that in the concept of God. God is our Father. And often we have uh, belittled God in such a way that when we face certain things, we're so afraid. I mean, think about the virus. Think about the situation where we were recently, where we were currently kind of sort of in as well. Many of us, we have forgot the kind of God we serve. And it's time that we elevate, allow God to become the God that He is really. You know, it's, it's actually idolatry to, to, put, to, 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 of, um, to, to create an image of God who He is not. And I am trusting God that something inside of us will rise up, that we will see God for who He is. And then when we get into that place, when we realize who God is and we really, well, what He really can do, we're not going to be afraid of certain things. So when you've struggled with fear, people, it's, it's just a matter of going back to God, be honest with God and say, God, I've struggled with fear over this time, but I give it back to you. There's no condemnation. God is not going to judge you. But here's the thing, if you're not honest with yourself, if you're not honest with God, God can't help you to get rid of that. And that's the thing. Um, God wants us to get rid of that fear, to see Him for who He is, so that his fear can come upon our lives, so that the enemy can run away. We are, uh, we are seeing amazing things in our intercession at this go, uh, given time. We've seen breakthrough in many areas, but I believe that we need to stand strong, that we need to trust God to speak through us, and that we know that we're fighting a battle here, not against flesh and blood, 
that we keep our eyes upon upon the work of the cross, uh, what God has done for us, and that we continue to see that victory is coming. The last one I want to share this morning quickly on is uh, that worship and prayer brings God's wisdom in our lives. Listen to what verse 14 says of 1 Samuel 18. It says this, um, And David behaved wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. David behaved wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. And I remember this is part of the scripture which said um, that the Lord's presence was upon David, and then Saul became afraid of his presence, and he was afraid of that. And it's all in the same sentence, all the same passage. You see, why was Solomon a wise man? Not because God gave him wisdom. I think because Solomon was able to understand what his father had and what he didn't have. And then what he did is he said, Lord, give me that which my father had, which I do not have. And that was specifically the coming in and the going out. In other words, going out into war, where we are currently, in the spiritual side of that, and then coming in to get refreshed, to, to find ourselves, to find direction, to ask our Father what you want, how do we get strategy, because we need to get to that place continuously. Uh, coming in is also talking about a worshipper, being a worshipper. If we, we wouldn't know, and this is the thing, David knew both. David was a worshipper, but David was a warrior as well. And we need to have both. You need to know how to worship, because in the presence of God, this is where we become vulnerable, as I said. But at the same time, there's a different aspect of God where we're not the worshiper, but we are the warrior and that we see God for what it is. So I want to close this morning with scripture in 2 Chronicles 9, verse 1 to 4. And it talks about the queen of Sheba that came to Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived. And she, she asked him some questions, but look, let's read from that um, famous part in 2 Chronicles 9, verse 1 to 4. It says, Now when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon, she came to Jerusalem to test Solomon with hard questions, having a very great retinue, camels that bore spices, gold in abundance, and precious stones. And when she came to Solomon, she spoke, to, uh, she spoke with him about all that was in her heart. So Solomon answered all her questions. There was nothing so difficult for Solomon that he could not explain it to her. And when the queen of Sheba had seen the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the food on his table, the seating of his servants, the service of his waiters and their apparel, his cupbearers and their apparel, and his entryway by which he went up to the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. Wow. Listen, what happened here? The queen of Sheba came to Solomon. She asked him some questions. She looked at his, um, his palace. She looked at his servants. And here's the thing. She looks at the way, the Bible says, at his entryway, the way he entered into the, the temple. When she saw that, there was no more spirit left in her. She had no more arguments. She had no more breath. She was just, wow. Now, here's the thing. I am currently, well, let me put it this way. I am totally convinced that this is a similar situation where we find ourselves, um, as in Scripture, with Jericho. Where the people were marching around the walls, uh, about, around the walls of Jericho, and the Bible says for six days they were allowed, to, or they were not allowed to talk. So they were just allowing, uh, they were just uh, walking around that place, not talking. Now at the at the first day or two, I think you were intimidated by the high walls and you're walking around that, but you're not allowed to talk. Because here's the thing: often when we see things and we speak too soon, we speak death, we think, oh God, I will never get around this. Imagine those people, they were walking around those walls, they thought, oh God, are we ever going to get into the city? But God said, no, just keep quiet, because you are a bunch of moaners. Last time you complained, um, you, the rest of you died in the desert, and God had to leave them there. Now they're in the promised land, and there was a uh, tendency, the human tendency, or the complaining, uh, to, to, to complain, and said, just keep quiet. So day one, they walk around, Day two, they walk around the city, they're not allowed to talk. Day three, now they suddenly start seeing something in that, um, around that wall, I imagine. That's just my translation of that wall. Um, and they walk around that city, they probably saw, oh wait, there's a crack in this wall. And then on day three, day four, they go there, and they're still not allowed to talk. And they say, oh, there's a brick loose. Uh, this is maybe possible. Day five, and it carries on. But then on day seven, they're instructed to give a shot of victory. And when they released that song or that victory, we know that the walls came down. 
And I, I believe that we as a church are building up for the biggest shout of victory that is going to be released for us here specifically as a congregation when we are allowed to get together. Currently, our church building is um, busy getting finished. We're painting it at this moment and we're hoping to get it ready ASAP so that when we are allowed to open up, when we are allowed to have services, that the biggest shout of victory would be released for us ever that we would be able to worship in that place like never before. I can imagine that. I cannot wait for that. So I'm, I'm encouraging you in the meanwhile, go into the presence of God. Do not walk away from the presence of God, but build up. Allow your spirit, <laughs> almost, I don't want to say starve your spirit, but build up. It's almost like you cannot wait to worship with the rest of our brothers together. And that's, that's going to be some of our greatest worship moments. It's going to be a moment where we're going to lift up the name of Jesus over that place, dedicate that place, thank God for what He's done for us, but overall declare the greatness of God in His majesty, His goodness over this nation. I want to one more, give you one more scripture in Ezekiel 46 verse 9. It says, But when the people of the land come before the Lord on the appointed feast days, whoever enters by way of the north gate to worship shall go out by the way of the south gate. And whoever enters by the way of the south gate shall go out by the way of the north gate. He shall not return by the way of the gate through which he came, but shall go out through the opposite gate. Very interesting scripture there. But I'm not going to spend more time in explaining it. In short, what it says here is that every time when they went into the temple, they had to go out on the other side. But it talks about the presence of God. And here's the, the message that I want to bring across here. Every time when we get into the presence of God, you are getting changed. You will never enter in a specific way, really seeking God, and come out the same. When you see God, when you seek His presence, He is guarantee, I guarantee you, He will change you. He will lift up your spirit. He will give you hope. He will bring peace. This is such an important time to push into the God and then walk out there and do war. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the times which we are living. Father, we thank you that you never leave us nor forsake us, that you call us to come into you, that you call us to come into your presence. My prayer this morning is that you would refresh each and everyone listening to my voice this morning. Father, I pray that you will come, Father, and as we draw closer to you, that you will draw near to us. But Father, at the same time, as we go out into war, that you are the one that equip us. Father, I pray, bless the hands of each and every one, Father, right now there, Lord, that's busy, that's basically making war. And Father, we know that we are going to have days ahead that's coming, Father, that we can worship together. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen.